Oh boy, we're back in post-commentary land, that can only mean one thing. Computer issues, yay! Oh boy, I should probably explain myself. Um, firstly, I'm very sorry for episodes 25 through 28. I did not realize that there was a major audio glitch that kept showing up throughout those videos. And I think I explained this back in A Hat in Time, but because this is the LP that specifically spawned the problem, I figured I might as well explain myself here as well, and hopefully better. So, uh, I think there's a blue coin over there. I actually completely forgot it. <laughs> That's not important. Focus, Cora Cat. <laughs> um... So, I think what happened is that my recording software, which is what I've been using to also record my commentary, um, there was like a glitch in it, and for whatever reason, it kept glitching out my audio every few minutes, and I didn't catch it until... Um, until I actually published episode 28, and I was re-listening to the videos and like, oh shit. This is in every single one of the videos, and I can't do anything about them because they're already published. I actually debated going back into the file and re-recording those videos from scratch. But A, I still have that screwed up memory card, and B... I don't have a whole lot of time to do that, so the videos are just going to be there, and they're going to be annoying. So, yeah, that that has taught me a lesson. <laughs> do not record your audio inside of the video editing program, or the, uh, not the video editing program, I'm doing that right now. Don't use the same software to record your audio as your video, that's what I was trying to say. So now, uh, starting with Two Geeks Play uh, Inspector Gadget, I now record my commentary and my video completely separately. So I start the video about five seconds before I hit the commentator button, or I hit my recording button for my audio, and I just go from there. It does take longer for me to find where my commentary starts, but uh, it, it definitely saves a lot of headaches because now I know that my commentary is going to be perfectly fine. Because I actually record on here all the time. Because I actually did that as a test drive to see like if my commentary was going to glitch out. And it doesn't. So I know it's not an issue with my computer. It's an issue with the editing or the uh, recording software. I've since reinstalled it to uh, see if that issue was resolved, and I think it is, but just to be on the safe side, I'm no longer going to record my uh, commentary in the same software as I record my video. So, anyway, that's the long short of it. <laughs> um, big apologies. I hope that I won't be running into any other technical issues, because... That is really embarrassing, and yeah, I'll just say that's just like the Infinity Cat saga, that was just something that I had to learn the hard way, because I was stupid, so there you go. <laughs> uh, in other news, yes, I do have a new name, uh, Cora Cat 13 I almost wanted to say 19 I don't know why. Um... That actually has a really simple thing to it, and it does actually revolve around, again, another mistake. Um, the mistake this time was not checking YouTube to see if the name was taken. Because unlike Twitter and many other sites that forbid you to use certain uh, usernames if uh, they're already taken, YouTube has several Infinity Cats, and I didn't realize it until I changed the name. 
For a while, I changed it to the Infinity Cat to make it more official, but... Um... I have since decided that was not, excuse me, a good idea. And I needed a new gamer tag. So I just went, I actually went and asked, uh, I asked my Twitter followers and I asked some friends, like, what would work. And um, a really close friend actually suggested Avery Cat 13. And I decided, I like Cora Cat 13 better, but that's actually a really good username. So. Uh, shout out to uh, Widget Slayer uh, 101. I think that's their username still on YouTube. Um, a very big thanks to you. I, I I definitely enjoy this tag a lot better. It definitely fits my personality a lot better. I'm definitely obsessed with cats. Uh, the number 13 is everywhere, like from my artwork to just basically just look up anything that is supposed to like represent me and you will very commonly find the number 13 associated with it because a 13 is a very special number to me i think i explained it in an earlier episode so if i did uh let me know in the comments which i highly encourage you do please comment i like hearing from you just be sure that it's civil and actually kind of relating to whatever i'm talking about in the video But, uh, I'm getting off track. I actually forgot what I was talking about there for a second. <laughs> but, anyway. Um. So, yeah, that's... Wow, I just went on talking about, like, apologies and stuff. I might as well be a Canadian. <laughs> that's actually a joke I say a lot at work. Which, I have nothing against Canadians. I think they're awesome. Uh, the Canucks definitely have a lot of things figured out that us Americans for some reason still haven't figured out. Like, um, they figured out how to make a universal healthcare system work. Um, and, you know, there's just less conflict over there in Canada, at least as far as I know. Um, I think the homicide rate might be a little higher in Canada. I'm not real sure, but... I know there's something that's a little higher than the United States, but, you know, there's not a whole lot to really say on that. But anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even explain what we were doing here. Um, basically, what we were doing was playing the slots to unlock this stage, which is by far, in terms of backgrounds, the most unique out of all all of the stages in Super Mario Sunshine thus far because there is no other stage that has this backdrop and it's actually my personal favorite it is so beautiful look at this background it feels like a sunset on Serena Beach itself which is very appropriate because you know we're in Serena Beach so uh, I'm gonna die here no I'm not because I'm awesome sweet uh, I feel like I'm going to die somewhere else. I don't know where, but uh, I get a bad feeling. <laughs> uh, I know I'd die a couple of times here on this stage. Because, uh, oh, well, there it is. <laughs> Death number one. Good job. But anyway, um, that was embarrassing. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not mad about it. Because this is getting very close to the end game. Um, Serena Beach, I would say, has some of the harder uh, secret stages. There are two of them. And um, I did surprisingly well at the last one. I'm really kind of shocked that I did well. Or I should say as well as I did. And I think that was one of the ones I had to redo. Uh, in, actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that was one of the ones I had to redo, and I did not use Flood, because um, if I used Flood to cheat anything, um, that would actually just take away from the experience. Because, I don't know. Because it would. <laughs> but, you know, that just kind of goes to show you don't save all the time in case you fuck up. But really, part of that was not my fault. That was just the stupid Elgato being as annoying as it was but you know 
it's not like our media is any better because you know instead of like video glitches we have audio glitches um, not with the game itself but with my own commentary which is really stupid annoying I really don't like that <laughs> And by the way, it was a real... Well, that was smooth. <laughs> I kind of saw that coming. I felt like in the original recording of this that I was going to fall off that Rubik's Cube. Although I think I actually did still like, what the fuck? I do not like the Rubik's Cubes in this state. They're really annoying. Although, this does remind me of... Stay, like Secret Stage 2 in um, Bianco Hills. This strongly reminds me of that stage, but way more focused on the Rubik's Cubes. I know they're not really Rubik's Cubes, but they look like Rubik's Cubes, so that's what I call them. That is their unofficial name. Kind of like the uh, magically appearing and disappearing blocks from the Mega Man series. They actually do have an official name. They're called Appearing Blocks. But come on, that's not fun. Call them the magically appearing and disappearing blocks. It's a long, overly annoying title, but, you know, it makes sense. Okay, so in that particular video back in Bianco Hills, where I was just talking about, like, how I still thought that uh, those stages felt a lot harder than they really needed to be, this is a prime example of what I was talking about, like, in how they are not balanced. Because, in my opinion, that weird flippy block stage or whatever with the Rubik's Cube, I actually find that one way harder than this one. This one is actually not that hard. I personally feel that um, Serena 4 is actually way easier than um, Bianco Secret 2, which I think is stage 6. And that really shouldn't be. I mean, you would think that a stage in Serena Beach would be way harder, but it isn't. Now, I'm not going to be saying that whenever we do um, Piana Village 5. That stage is appropriately placed. In fact, I would have actually preferred it actually be stage 6 or stage 8. Or, you know what? Yeah, it would actually make sense for stage 6 because... Oh god, that stage is one of the most obnoxious stages in the game. In fact, I'd argue that it is within the top five hardest stages in Super Mario Sunshine. That does not involve, like, red coins in the hidden stages. Because the ones in the hidden stages, if you're practiced, they're not that bad. They're just kind of annoying. But, oh god, Piana Village. Ugh. I just, I'm not looking forward to that stage. I really hate that stage. In fact, that might actually take up a whole video in and of itself, because it's not getting there, that's the hard part. That part's not that bad, and actually, um, I have a bit of a treat for you for that video. I'm going to actually show you a glitch that I mentioned back in Bianco Hills. I think I did, but if I didn't, uh, I'm going to mention it now. There is a really funny glitch. That is in Piana 5. That, uh... Basically, you can actually survive the pit. Yeah, if you fall off of Yoshi off a very specific mushroom, you will survive the pit. And it is one of the funniest things you will see, because you can actually see the entire world around you. And... It, it soft locks the game. You actually have to leave the stage in order to get out of that soft lock. I mean, you can actually freely move around. That's no problem. But, unfortunately, you can't leave that area. You're stuck down there. But, yeah, I find it very interesting. And I'm going to try to remember to do that uh, whenever we get to Piana 5. So that might actually take a few minutes in and of itself. And I don't think I'm going to be doing that one live. I might do that one post-commentary as well. Because, to be honest, I, I'm still very nervous about, um, like, my audio glitching out and stuff like that. Because, you know, these things happen. And it's just, it, it's not unreasonable to be nervous. 
So uh, anyway, and plus I can just collect my thoughts and focus on trying to achieve the glitch. Also, how the hell did I miss that M? Oh man. Note to self, future Korra, please go back to the stage and grab that blue coin. Or, you know what? Uh, I might do that whenever we do the blue coin video because, you know, that's going to be coming up soon. Because we don't really have that many stages left. All we really have to go for is, uh, we have three more stages here in, um, Serena Beach. And, wow, that was lucky. Uh, we have four stages in, uh, Piana Village. At least main stages. That does not include, like, um, secret stages, like those stupid red coin ones. There's actually a hidden shine sprite in uh, Piana Village that requires you to go into Mission 8 and spray up at the sun. That one's actually one of the easiest secret shines you're going to achieve in the game. And it's actually, I'd argue, the easiest mission in Piana Village. So, yeah, that's going to be a real fun one. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, we should actually be very, uh, close to finishing the game, uh, once we finally clean out, um, Pianta Village and stuff, but I'm trying to, I'm debating, like, how I'm gonna do that, like, am I going to, uh, I don't know, I've been doing kind of, like, two stages per video because, you know, they take a while, but... I'm debating, like, whether or not I want to, um, like, do three stages and just kind of just run across each of the particular worlds. And also, I'm debating, like, when the hell... Oh, fuck that durian. Um, sorry, that reminded me of Yoshi's Fruit Adventure. I still have nightmares of that stage. I hate it. Um... I know, like I said, the Piana Village one, good lord, that one's going to take a lot of time. And considering that I have to continue following my rule of, like, I can't... Oh, God, Cataclax. You're not going to spank me, Cataclax. Leave me alone. Well, I got electrified by the Koopas. And what the hell just happened? <laughs> oh, told you not to spank me, Cataclax. I was actually continuously telling that stupid Cataclack not to spank me. Fortunately, he goes away, so... Anyway, uh, I'm getting off track. But, honestly, you guys should be used to that, but I, I gotta stop saying that. Anyway. Um... I don't know. We'll figure it out. And... Uh, because I didn't mention it, King Boo looks very derpy. But yes, that is King Boo in Super Mario Sunshine. He's either a different King Boo from uh, the one in Luigi's Mansion, or he's the same one, but uh, he gained, like, the dark eyes and stuff later on, because, you know, a lot of people consider this to be, like, a prequel to Luigi's Mansion, and I can believe that. Whew! Okay. Well, we talked on quite a bit in this stage, my god. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to call it a video here. Uh, next time, we go to one of my least favorite stages in the fucking game. We are heading off to Piana 5. Sands help us all. See you guys later.